Today, we're gonna to be talking about the cheapest multi-channel amplifiers we've ever tested. They're for a monoprice. Are they any good? That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audioholics. So last year around summertime, uh, Monoprice hired me to do some beta testing on some new budget amplifiers. They actually paid me to do a beta test for them. I tested out their two channel, three channel, five channel and seven channel amplifiers. I gave them a beta test report. They asked me to help them accurately spec the amplifiers so they could publish it on their website. Well, after the beta test was done, I asked them permission if I could actually turn it into a written report. I published it on Audio Hulk, so I'll put the link down below so you can see the full data on everything I presented about these amplifiers, and you guys can get all the details of the measurements. But I figured, why not do a video? I forgot that we didn't do a video on it for YouTube, so I could go deeper into the measurements and help you guys decide if these are the kind of amplifiers that are right for you. What really motivated me to do this video now is they keep dropping the prices. So now you can get the two channel amplifier for under $300. That's insane. I wanna go over with you the results of these uh, test reports, and then you guys can figure out if it works in your system or not. So I just wanna show you some quick um, pictures here. This is what the core of the power supply looks like on all the amplifiers, depending on how many channels and how many capacitors you get and how big the toroid is. They're actually giving you a toroidal transformer, which is great. They're giving you pretty large power supply capacitors. I'll get a little more into that in a minute. This is what the amplifiers look like. It's actually pretty handsome. It's nothing like, nothing like audiophile looking, but certainly nothing bad looking at all. The LED goes red when there's a fault and it's blue when it's correctly uh, powered on, as you can see here. Here's another look at the insides and you have a nice heat sink there. They got some fans um, that go on during initial startup. And you can just see the wiring of, of how everything is laid out here. There's my test loads when I was doing it. So let me share my screen now. We'll go over the test results. Again, this is on Audioholics, and I will put the link down below. Now, these are the prices they were released at. The two channel was $400, the three channel was 500, and the five channel was 600. Now, they also have a seven channel uh, version of this amplifier that they're selling on their website. I did not like the way that bench tested. I found layout problems with how they did the wire harnessing that was giving me some nasty results. I personally would not recommend the seven channel amplifier. Um, if you want to take a chance like that and you want to buy it and determine if it works in your system, more power to you. But I just, I didn't publish the results. I just didn't feel like it was uh, an amplifier that I could recommend. So again, here's the power supply layout. You got a big toroid here. I think this is the two channel that we're looking at. Decent sized heat sink. Got some fans in here as well. And I want to show you... Um, just the price breakdown again and the power rating and the power supply. So the two channel was $400. It's now on sale for 295, 90 watts times two based on my ratings because I measured it and I spec the power at the knee and they actually went forth. Uh, I got to give them kudos. They were very conservative about rating the amplifier power of these amplifiers, especially for a budget amplifier. Kudos to Monoprice for listening to me and being very conservative about these ratings. So this is an honest 90 watts of channel with both channels driven at eight ohms. It's got a pretty decent sized po toroidal power supply, two times 10,000 microfarad cap, 63 volt. You jump up to the three channel, same power rating, a little bit bigger power supply capacitors there. And then the five channels got uh, four times 10,000 microfarads of caps, big toroid, 90 watts times five, five channels driven, $415. So this line of uh, amplifiers really competes with the Emotiva Base X. And to be honest with you, I think they're made at the same factory because if you look at the insides of the Emotiva and you look at the insides of this amp, they're very similar. They have the two fans on them, the same heat sink, the same kind of layout. I'm pretty sure they're made in the same factory. They may, they may not be identical amps. The uh, Emotiva is rated at a little bit higher power. I have not tested the Emotiva, so I can't give you any comments on that. But I do know for a fact that the Monoprice is actually giving you a three-year warranty. I don't know what the warranty period is on the Emotiva. So if anybody knows, you know, feel free to give me comments down below. 
So the gain structure on all of these amplifiers is 28 dB, and that's, and that's whether you use unbalanced or balanced. That's a pretty high gain. What that means is that 1.1 volts RMS, you can drive these amplifiers to full power. So any AV receiver or any budget preamplifier can easily drive these amps into clipping. So if you've got like a entry-level AVR, like an older Yamaha or Denon that has pre-outs on it, some of those, maybe they'd clip at a volt and a half to two volts RMS. This thing will be fine with those because I don't know of any AVR that clips below one and a half volts in my testing. So you could easily pair these amplifiers with pretty much any AVR on the market that has preamp outputs or even like a USB or you know a, a streaming DAC that has uh, analog outputs for preamps. So here's the frequency response. I did power bandwidth. This is at full power. These are very wide bandwidth amplifiers from 10 hertz to all the way to 80 kilohertz at minus 0.8 dB. That's pretty much the limit of my audio precision. And that's at 140 watts, uh, two channels driven at four ohms. And it's stable. So that's, you know, that's a good 500, 600 millisecond sweep. Didn't have any problems with the amplifier turning off or doing any weird behavior. The distortion was low. Did the same thing with 88 ohms with five channels driven on the five channel amplifier. And I got an honest, you know, 100 watts of channel times five. So these things have good power supplies in them. Now the FFT, um, I like to look at one kilohertz FFT to look at the harmonics that and the residual noise. And this is a pretty clean one on the two channel lamp, a little bit power supply hum, not something that's audible when it's minus 95 dB. The second order harmonic is 86 dB below the fundamental. That's pretty good. This isn't like state of the art. This isn't an, a Purify amplifier or a benchmark amplifier, but it's pretty darn good, especially when you consider it's $300. This is at one watt. So it's a pretty clean spectra. I can't really complain about that on the two channel amp. When you look at the balanced version, it's about the same in, in terms of the distortion spectra, a little bit less hum in the power supply. Um, the balanced cables in this case actually helped a little bit. Now, if I look at the three channel amp, the spectra is not quite as clean. There's higher power supply and noise. This is all in the layout. Um, one thing I noticed about these amplifiers is they could have done a better job laying them out. They didn't use twisted pair cabling on anything. Um, the power supply cables were really close to the outputs of the transformer uh, of the output devices. They didn't use shielding cables or anything. So they could have really improved the layout of this amplifier and this would have cleaned that up. I'm not saying that this is necessarily audible, but it's just not tidy. It's not where I'd like to be for state of the art, but it certainly is very acceptable, um, especially if you're using it as a secondary system or you're just trying to supplement a low power uh, system and you just need some extra power. This would be really good for overhead channels if you wanna put some amplifiers on high channels, if you have an AV processor and you've got a really solid foundation already with a five or seven channel amp, and you just want to add some high channels, you could certainly do that with these amplifiers. And the balanced version really didn't make any difference at all um, in terms of the distortion spectra. In fact, the XLR connectors on these amplifiers is really a novelty. I don't see a whole lot of benefit to the XLR inputs on these amps. So don't worry if you can't use XLRs. It's just there for a feature, for a check mark, but it's not a fully differential uh, signal path. And I didn't see any better distortion or noise really on any of the measurements with this. You can see here, this is the balanced version and it actually was worse uh, looking at it here with power by residuals. So signal to noise ratio, this is at one watt. I like to do my SNR at one watt. That way you can compare apples to apples and you could scale up the power depending on what the power level is. That way you always compare every amplifier at one watt. And that's where you really care about the noise floor. You want a really low noise floor. Now for state of the art, in my opinion, 90 dB A weighted at one watt is state of the art. Anything 90 dB or greater is excellent. 86 dB is very acceptable. This should be a very quiet amplifier. I like anything over 80 dB. When you start getting in the 70s and 60s, that's not good. You're gonna hear noise, you're gonna hear hiss, especially with high sensitivity speakers. I think for the most part, this should be a relatively quiet amplifier, even if you're running a pair of clip horns or something that's high sensitivity and you're sitting relatively close. That's a good rating for the two channel amp. Now I compare the five channel balance versus unbalanced. The balance is on the left, the unbalance is on the right. You can see the unbalance is actually cleaner. There's 
about a two or three dB advantage in noise output in the unbalanced. And this is with the signal level held constant uh, for both balanced and unbalanced. Still not bad though, for a five channel amp uh, to do 80 something dB SNR at one watt, even with the layout issues that I, that I talked about, that's respectable. It's certainly nothing to be scared about. And, and, and basically I think you would have a pretty quiet amp even when you go up to the five channel. Looking at the crosstalk performance, channel to channel crosstalk, this is pretty good. I think we're looking at um, at 10 kilohertz, we're at like minus 60 dB. That's about the minimum I would want for channel to channel isolation. 60 dB at 10 kilohertz, you know, 50 dB or so at 20 kilohertz, that's acceptable. That's within the range here. I don't think there's any problems here with channel to channel isolation. Of course, it's not as good as a monoblock amplifier but it's acceptable. You get this kind of performance in an AVR. Nothing uh, too worried about there. And then we look at the uh, one channel undriven with all the other channels driven. Again, it looks pretty good. About what I was expecting. So let's go over the power measurements. You can see I got all my little power resistors here and the cabling and all that stuff. And um, we, we basically do three types of power ratings. We do continuous full power bandwidth. That's a full frequency sweep. Um, I go anywhere from 500 milliseconds all the way to five seconds. Sometimes I'll have to scale that back a little bit if I'm doing full bandwidth because it'll shut off amplifiers. But this one was pretty good. This one was was tolerant to sweeping. Uh, didn't really have any operational issues. A couple of times, I think when I was going down to like DC, it didn't like it. So I raised the sweep level to like 10 hertz or 20 hertz and it was fine. I do the one kilohertz power sweep instantaneous distortion test. That's the ones you see on the magazines mostly that still do measurements. They usually do it at just one kilohertz. And then I do dynamic power, which is a CEA 26, 20, 2006 burst test. It tries to simulate what you hear with music program material. I like doing that test because it shows you if there's any headroom in the power supply, which um, you usually get with linear power supplies. This is a linear AB amplifier, by the way, in case I didn't mention that. So we look at the two channel, um, two channels driven at eight ohms. We're looking at 118 watts at 1%, 103 watts at 0.1%, both channels driven. And you could see that they rated power at the knee, that little inflection point where it starts going from horizontal to vertical, it's right at around 90 watts. Again, kudos to Monoprice. They could have easily called this 100, 100 watt or 118 watt amplifier if they really wanted to. But I like that they were conservative. It was good channel to channel consistency on the two channel amp here for $300. That's, I'm impressed. And for the ASR people that like Cyanad, I show you the distortion in a dB form of Cyanad here. You're looking at from 81 dB Cyanad, which is at about five watts, to 86 dB Cyanad at 30 watts. It's a good number. I mean, I, like I said in the past, um, I think anything above 70 is good. Anything above 80 is really good. And anything above 90 is state of the art. This is not state of the art. This is a good solid performance, I, but again, it's not to the level of a Purify or some of the other really good linear AB amps on the market that we've measured in the past, but it's certainly acceptable when it's in the 80 dB number. The distortion is not an issue there. And then I did it for the three channel amp. Um, so this one's a little inconsistent. There's one channel that had a little bit higher distortion than the others. I think, again, this is a layout issue or it could be maybe the uh, output devices that they're using, they're just not as well matched from channel to channel because this is a budget amp, but it still hit uh, power ratings, you know, the 90 watt power ratings without any problems. It's just the consistency of the three channel amp is not quite as good as the two channel amp, at least the sample that I got. And now, of course, we look at the sign ad for it, and it ranges anywhere from the low 70s to mid 70s, depending on the channel, as you can see here. Again, it's not as good as the two channel, about 10 dB worse or so. Really, the star of this whole amplifier series, the budget amplifier series, is the two channel amp. And um, that's the one I would recommend in most cases if you're just looking for a little power on the cheap that's respectable performance. Definitely, the two channel amp is the star of the show. And we look at the five channel, uh, one kilohertz, eight ohms. We're doing an honest uh, 101 watts, all channels driven at 0.1 and 109, 109 watts with five channels driven at one, at 
1% distortion. Very good. And the channel to channel consistency is a little bit better on this one, actually. So I like the way the five channels looking, to be honest with you. It looks pretty darn good. And uh, again, I do the sign ad here and I'm showing this is for the five channel. Not quite as good as what we were seeing with the two channel. It's in the high 70s, almost 80. And then we did some uh, dynamic burst test. This is two channel, uh, four ohms, CEA 2006, the two channel amp, 250 watts. That's got some good headroom there, really good headroom. We did it also for the five channel at eight ohms, 150 watts. So that's really good. That's, considering this is a 90 watt rated amp and you're getting a uh, dynamic power of 150 watts with all five channels driven, pretty darn good, my friends. And here is the power tables. If you guys want to look at the summary of my results, it's all laid out for each amplifier. You got the two channel amp here. It shows you the number of channels driven, the kind of amplifier test that I ran, the power, the load, the distortion. We did that for the three channel. We did that for the five channel. So yeah, um, I think overall, this is a darn good deal, especially with the special discount. And I'll put some links, uh, affiliate links, in the description below if you guys want to buy these amplifiers so again with the seven channel amp uh, i did not get to retest it the only one i tested was the one they sent me and it just did not measure well and even though they're selling it it's not something i would personally recommend i would definitely go with the two channel amp as as a very beginning and then if you need more supplementation for power the three or the five channel amps are certainly a good value so what's really compelling about the two channel amp to me it's under 300 dollars you pair that with a streaming DAC, like an Ever Solo DAC, which is like 800 bucks. It has a preamp built into it, a really solid one. And you get some budget speakers, whether it's the Monoprice um, Audition series, or you better yet, the Encore series, or you get some you know, entry-level Polks. I mean, there's so many brands of speakers you can pair this with. You could put together a really kick-ass two-channel system for like 1500 bucks that does all your streaming, has good performance, good solid amplification, and good speakers. That's awesome. You couldn't get these kind of deals, you know, five, 10 years ago. So the fact that Monoprice is bringing this pretty aggressively to you is a great deal. And like I said, if you want to supplement an AVR or if you want to supplement a processor for doing the high channels, certainly you could do it with the two channel, three channel or five channel amplifiers. They give you pretty respectable performance, not state of the art, but pretty darn good. So give me some comments down below what you think about these amplifiers. If you own these amps, please let me know how you like them. I didn't do extensive listening tests. I primarily focused on doing a beta test for them. I think I did hook up the two channel to some speakers and I thought it sounded okay, but I, did, I can't give you all the flowery chocolate mid-range kind of comments and subjective impressions of the amp. I didn't spend a lot of time with them. I was just, my goal was to set out to properly spec the amplifiers for Monoprice. And again, I'm so happy that they took to heart the measurements and they were very conservative about their ratings. That speaks volumes for the company. The fact that they give you a three-year warranty is awesome as well. But guys, I also want to let you know about our Martin Logan giveaway. We're giving away a pair of F100s, the Motion Series XT. Awesome speakers, $5,000 pair of speakers. Matthew Pose reviewed them last year for us. We review it, you win it. These speakers got our mid-price product of the year award for tower speakers. There's only about uh, a week, less than a week left to enter this contest. So if you're in the continental United States, please enter this contest. I encourage you to do so. I'll put the links down below. Just realize that there's nobody that's going to contact you through YouTube saying that you won. Ignore the messages from the trolls below. If you win this contest, you will be notified by an authorized person from AudioHawks through, through an AudioHawks email address. And I just wish you guys luck. We always like to give back to the community and we're always trying to give away great prizes. We have a lot of great stuff in store for 2024. So I hope you guys, again, enter this contest and the many that are to come. And if you like this video, guys, please hit the thumb up, hit subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. And guys, our patrons, I just want to shout out to you guys. I really appreciate all the support you've been giving us. And I can't wait to do our live stream with you guys real soon. We're going to be doing a Patreon live stream once a month for like Q&A sessions. So if you sign up to our Patreon, you can be part of that as well. Well, guys, that's a wrap. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.